Commissioner, thank you so much for joining us today at the DC Blockchain Summit. Um, you have been such an inspiring figure and such a bright light for the entire community. So first and foremost, thank you for your leadership. Actually, let's give her a round of applause <laughs> for just being who you are and being the leader that you are. Well, thank you, um, Perianne. It's really a, a delight to be here. And Paul Atkins was a nice one to introduce me, but anything good that I know or do, I've learned from him, so he gets all the credit for that. And we're very blessed to have Paul on our team as well, and he's been so helpful um, in the, the many issues that, that our community is, is facing. I have a lot of questions, like a whole laundry list of questions that I've asked some of our members to submit them. A lot of great stuff that's coming in. Um, so I uh, apologize in advance for the rapid fire, um, but I, I know that you're very much dedicated to I should, case. before we begin, give of my course. disclaimer, which I, what I say represents my own views and not necessarily the views of the commissioner or my fellow commissioners. Got it. All right. We understand. Now we're good yes, to go. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Uh, okay, so, so first and foremost, a lot of the companies in this space, they are relying on um, dated guidance on um, how to operate in this space. Um, so custody rules, the Howey test as an example. Um, we mentioned earlier um, this morning that there's been about 30 enforcement actions related to digital assets, but we haven't really seen um, formal or binding guidance related to digital assets out of the SEC as of yet. Um, wh wh why not? I mean, what is the uh, the pace of this, or uh, what do you think is taking um, is driving uh, kind of the SEC's pace today? Regulators are slow, so I think you shouldn't expect any kind of um, quick activity. As certainly not in 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 terms of everything's relative, right? So for our world, we might be moving very quickly, but for your world, it's going to look slow. Um, but I do think that there's a, there's a learning curve, so people at the SEC are trying to learn about this space um, and trying to understand where the pressure points are, where the pain points are. So you all need to come in and tell us where the pain points are, where the old regime doesn't fit. Um, and then I think we can try to move forward with guidance. I, of course, would like to see the commission come out with guidance um, at the commission level to make it easier for people to understand where the lines are and how this, how the new technology that we're seeing interacts with those lines. Um, but we need from you examples of, of where that would be helpful. Well, so speaking of, of guidance, you, you've mentioned in the past that the SEC is working on guidance related to tokens. Is there any insights into this that you can share with us today? Well, staff is working on guidance, but I should note that that's staff guidance. So that's staff of different divisions are working on guidance, corporation finance, trading and markets. Um, but it's not going to be commission level guidance. And so again, it suffers from the same problem, which is that, you know, they're statements and they're valuable, but it's not at the level of the commission and we're the ones that make the decisions. So ultimately, we really want to have it come out of the commission. Okay, and that would be, I, I guess, your goals would be. That would be my goal, level. right? Right. Yeah. Uh, for company, so I guess when we do start to see this uh, gu guidance come forward, uh, for companies that have issued tokens um, that may be considered securities, um, will will there be a path to compliance for these projects? I mean, there is a path, but I think the path that you've seen, uh, you know, most recently there we had an enforcement action where someone came in and self-reported and said, look, we think we actually crossed the line here. Can we, can we come into compliance? And you can come into compliance, but there's still a price for that. So it, it does, um, you know, it does require you coming in and, and potentially doing some sort of a rescission offer for the people who invested. So it's something that you have to take very seriously if you're embarking on a project. You've got to take seriously which, line, which side of the line you're on. Right. Um, well, what, what about no action letters? Um, so both um, you and Director Henman ha have um, addressed, um, at potentially at the staff level, um, no action letters may be issued um, for some projects in this space. Uh, I, I don't believe we've seen any to date. Yeah. Um, it, is there, um, uh, I guess through conversations that we ha we've had, I mean, we are aware that some have been um, requested. It, it, would that be because these projects just didn't warrant them? Or um, is there something you guys need to see in addition that you're not seeing? Uh, what, what around the no action letter process is, is um, 
has us where we are today. Well, I think it would be, so when you, when you file one of these things with the staff, it's helpful for you to go in and talk to the staff at the same time you're filing. So you shouldn't feel that the only thing you can do is lob in a letter and then just let it sit. Reach out to the staff. We've got the Fin Hub. That's where you should reach out to the staff. And then it would be helpful if you reached out to my office just to let me know that you've got a letter in. And then I can sort of monitor progress from inside. Um, and usually on these types of things, there's a back and forth. So I like the idea of a no action process because it's someone who has a project and you think that you, you can do this as, say, a, not a securities offering. So you want to have comfort on that point. You come in and the staff will tell you, look, based on the circumstances and the facts that you lay out, laid out, we wouldn't recommend an enforcement action. And that's really a powerful thing to have in your back pocket. It's not the end all and be all, but it's a powerful thing. So I think if we were, and then it's public. So that's helpful too for other people to kind of get a sense of how to structure their projects. Um, but again, please don't just send in the letter. Tell us about it, tell me about it. Uh, and then I think that's a way to move things forward more quickly. Okay. But again, these processes take a long time. I mean, I'm just going to tell you, everything at the SEC is slow. We're operating in crypto time here. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so uh, shifting the conversation um, a little bit into security tokens, um, at the Chamber of Digital Commerce, we established um, an initiative called the Token Alliance. And Paul Atkins is one of our co-chairs, along with Jim Newsom, who's the former chairman of the CFTC. Uh, last year, we issued some guidelines for utility tokens, and now that group is working on guidelines for security tokens. Um, and what we're learning through the process is there's a lot of friction points um, for companies that are going down this path, everything from um, custody, um, transfer agents. Um, any thoughts or insights into um, issues uh, for security tokens on these topics um, in terms of a path forward? I mean, I think it really, the path forward is predicated on you all engaging with us, with our staff. Um, we have, again, the FinHub allows people to submit comments, and I would really encourage you. Uh, last year, in the, one, of, one of our divisions, the Division of Investment Management, put out a letter in which they asked a number of questions. And it's now, I, I asked if we could please put it up on the website, uh, put up on the website a link where people could actually comment on it because I think it's a conversation we need to have. And we've gotten, I think I looked today and I think we'd gotten maybe five or six letters. And I, I was pretty disappointed by that because I think these are conversations. It does take work on your part, I realize that, but we really need people to be writing in and responding. And so on these issues like custody, they're really technical, difficult issues. Um, and it comes up in a number of different formats. And so I think you all need to be working with us. I hope you'll come talk to me, come talk to the staff, come talk to me, um, educate me on these issues too, so that I can, again, be more educated when I'm interacting with our staff. Um, and if there, if there are problems that you see and you say, hey, this is a rule that just simply will not work in this space, but we have this other compensating protection that we think is sufficient, you know, let us know that too. And that gives us ideas of how we can potentially modernize our rules. Um, especially on transfer agents, that's an area where our rules are just old, and so they're old across the board, and not only as they interact with crypto. I want to uh, move forward with getting out some new rules, so this is the perfect time for you to come in with ideas on transfer agents. Um, you know, come give us your ideas so that we can work those concepts into whatever proposal we put out. Thank you for that. Um, well, we have seen um, a, a number of projects um, that have um, filed um, for a Reg A plus um, token offering, and uh, they have not been qualified uh, to date. What do you think the SEC needs to see in, in order to qualify these projects? I mean, each project is going to be assessed. Each Reg A offering is assessed on its unique facts and circumstances and the filings that, that people make. But I do think that anything that has crypto involved at all is going to get more scrutiny. Um, and so the best advice I can give is just be super responsive. If they ask for stuff, you've got to give it to them. Um, I do have concerns about the length of time some of these, these have taken. Um, and so again, if you can come tell me that you've filed, tell me what your experience is, how long you've been waiting, that, that 
lets me know what's going on in, in the division of corporation finance, and then I can ask, what's the hang up? You know, so I can I can be uh, trying to understand too, because I think it would be really valuable if we were able to get one of these reggae offerings over the line um, to show people this is really a viable way to go. And so I'm hoping that we'll be able to do that. Um, so feel free again to come talk to me on those issues. So just a couple weeks ago, um, the chamber, we issued our national action plan for blockchain. And uh, this is a campaign um, that we've put forward. And in our work at the chamber over the past five years, we spent a lot of time with the SEC, the CFTC, Treasury. The acronyms just keep going on and on and on. Uh, a lot of great work products going underway with different agencies and in independent regulators, um, uh, different stakeholders within the government that want to use this technology. And for us, when we really laid out the, the landscape in the United States, it's very complicated and there's some really interesting things going on. Um, but overall, we felt that it was time to just take a step back and say, well, what is the plan? Um, and for us, we felt it was important to go on record and to uh, make a call to the government, the, the highest levels of government, to demonstrate higher level leadership, to one, promote this technology and, and acknowledge it as an important technology for the future um, of the United States. Um, I, I, do you see value or, or what types of... Um, uh, uh, of action would you like to see the, the government take and, and, and thoughts on having a national strategy for blockchain? So I appreciated that you came out with this action plan. I think that's, um, that's helpful. But I, I will caution, innovation comes from the private sector. I mean, that's where it should come from. That's where it uh, naturally does come from because people have great ideas. They see problems. They want to solve those problems they come up with technology or other solutions to those problems. And so when you try to get uh, national action plans, to me that, that means that you're trying to, you know, not you specifically, but you know, people think, oh, wouldn't it be great if we coordinated this from the government and had, that has gotten us into lots of problems in the past. So I love grassroots. That's one of the things that draws me to this technology is very decentralized. I think that's a beautiful thing. So don't lose sight of the fact that that's really a beautiful aspect of this technology and don't try to over-involve the government either, right? We need to have clear regulatory guidelines. That's something that I think you've, you've been very forthright in calling for, which I think is really important. Um, we do need to let people know where, where they stand, but then within that, let people do what they want to do um, and, and, and don't try to have too much government partnership with with the private sector. That's for you all to, to do, and, and we just have to set those frameworks and then let the innovation um, happen on its own. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we certainly take this approach from a free market perspective, and the people who know this technology best are those that are building on it. Um, and it's important that those viewpoints are taken into account um, when forming public policy. Um, so what um, coordination efforts um, are currently um, underway within the, the, uh, your colleagues? Um, I, I, I know there is some coordination that that is happening, and, and, and we think that um, and some of the feedback that we get from our members is you know, different regulatory agencies are looking at this through very different lenses. And so it, 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 it's costing a lot of legal dollars to just kind of figure out where you fit and where right. you're supposed to go. Um, so uh, thoughts on coordination and, 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 and what is happening from a coordination perspective already? Well, I think there is interagency. There's interagency work on coordinating and trying to figure out where the regulatory frameworks interact with one another and where things should fit. Um, I think Congress is, can be helpful in sort of encouraging more cooperation. Um, and I think we see, we see interest from Congress in that, in that regard. But you know, we do realize that we need to work with our fellow regulators. Um, so there's there's work through the the FSOC, for example, which is brings together all the financial regulators. Um, and I think there's interest too. The states are obviously pretty involved in this area as well. So there's there's coordination um, work with the states also. But it's always difficult because everyone's trying to get their hands around the technology and then trying to figure out, you know, where does it stand with our rules, let alone with another agency. So there's still a lot more progress to be made on coordination. Right. Um, and also, we've seen a number of, 
of projects and through the work of our token alliance, we have some data that's also um, shown us that uh, some of these businesses who want to operate um, in the blockchain ecosystem are choosing not to operate in the United States. I've even had a couple of meetings today with companies that are here and they're saying they've been forced um, out. Um, do you have any concerns about the United States providing an environment that's inviting for companies to operate here and then how that could change our position um, as a nation on the world stage? Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly, whenever I hear people are not are deciding not to do entrepreneurial things in the U.S., that worries me because I do want our country to be the place where people want to come for that because we have the best regulatory framework um, within which to operate. So it, it's it's certainly a concern. But again, let me know where the pressure points are. One may just be the number of regulators we have here, which does it poses problems not only in this space, but in, in lots of other areas. People have to deal with lots of regulators here in the states and at the federal level. Um, but I think that we just need to keep working toward getting those regulatory guidelines clearer here, and then I hope that we'll be able to attract um, attract people back to this to this country. Well, thank you so much for your time and for your leadership, and appreciate you joining us um, at the summit. Thanks for having Thank me. You. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you.